This is section 2.3. It's on deductive reasoning. Here's some symbolic notation. Conditional statements can be written using symbolic notation where the letters are used to represent statements. An arrow pointing to the right is read implies. It connects the hypothesis and the conclusion. So if we wanted to write if P then Q, you could write it as P arrow Q. So when you see that, that means if P then Q. It's a quicker way to do it than writing all of this. If you wanted to write the negation of a statement P, you would write the symbol for negation, that little tilde, before the letter. So not P is written as tilde P. So here's two statements P and Q. P is the statement the angle is a right ang angle. Q is the statement the measure of the angle is 90. Our conditional would be if P then Q. This is how it appears symbolically. And here's how you would write it. You would write the word if, then write statement P. The angle is a right angle. Write the word then, and then finish with statement Q. The measure of an angle is 90. Okay, how does that look as a converse? Well, remember, if and then stay put, you switch the P and the Q's. So it would, symbolically, it would look like this. If Q, then P. Here's how it's read using the actual statements Q and P. If the measure of an angle is 90, then it is a right angle. The inverse, remember, looks just like the conditional, except we negate the hypothesis conclusion. So if not P, then not Q. Here's how it looks symbolically. If not P, then not Q. If an angle is not a right angle, then its measure is not 90. Contrapositive, remember, comes from the converse. It's the negation of the converse. So if not Q, then not P. Here's how it looks symbolically. If not Q, then not P. If the measure of an angle is not 90, then it is not a right angle. And here's the biconditional, P if and only if Q. Here's how you write it symbolically. Notice how the arrow goes both ways, P if and only if Q. An angle is a right angle if and only if its measure is 90. You can write this biconditional because the conditional and the converse were true statements, which makes the inverse and the contrapositive true as well. Now, we talked about that, so this truth value table would make some sense. You have a statement P and a statement Q. P implies Q would be if P then Q. So the truth value of a statement, it's either true or false. You can determine the conditions under which a conditional statement is true by using a truth table. The truth table at the right shows the truth values for the hypothesis P and the conclusion Q. The conditional if P then Q, notice, is only false when a true hypothesis produces a false conclusion. So notice how this conditional, it's only false when your blue is true and your red is false. Two statements are logically equivalent if they have the same truth value. So for example, notice this truth value and this truth value are the same. So that means this statement and this statement are logically equivalent. Okay, so here's a good example that I always like to use. I'm going to give you two statements, P and Q. Let's say the statement P is you get an A. Statement Q will be, I buy you a car. So if you get an A, then I buy you a car. Let's say you got the A. 
and I buy you a car. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't violate my end of the deal. So that's a true statement. If you get an A, I buy you a car. That's a true statement. Now, where this goes wrong is if you get an A and I don't buy you the car, something went wrong there. The contract was broken. That's why it's false. Now, those are pretty easy to understand. When we get down here to these other possibilities, maybe you didn't get an A, but maybe I still bought you the car. Did I break the contract? I really didn't. I didn't say what would happen if you, got, if you didn't get the A. Maybe I still buy you a car. So this one is a little bit trickier for people to understand. This one makes a little more sense. If you don't get an A, I don't buy you the car. I didn't break my contract. Okay, My contract is only broken if you get an A and I don't buy you the car. So that's what we're looking for with these truth values. The only way a conditional statement can be false is if the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false. So we'll probably go back to this example a couple times if you need me to.